So a few months ago, I put out a video called I've been living in Thailand for eight months, some tips for you to follow, something like that. Anyway, you guys can see it right there. So that video did pretty well. It's got over 100,000 views. And one of the recurring questions in, that people asked me in the comments was how did you stay in Thailand for eight months? And so for those who don't already know, I'm gonna answer that question in this video. And to keep things short and sweet, the answer is I have eight Thai wives. And each wife I have allows me to stay a month in Thailand. So if you take one month times eight wives, there you go, you get eight months. Not <laughs> really, I'm joking guys. But the way I stayed eight months in Thailand with no visa is my journey started back uh, October 13th of 2022. So last year when I arrived to Thailand, I bought a one-way ticket, no visa. And so when you do that, when you don't come on a visa, if you come from a country that doesn't, that, that Thailand allows you to come in with no visa, right? You just get an entry stamp, you know, or sort of a recent arrival. But once again, it's not a visa. It's just your entry stamp. So typically it's 30 days. But when I first got to Thailand eight months ago, or nine months ago, whenever I went, October, they were doing 45 days. So the regular entry stamp was 45 days without having to do anything. Just get, a, get in the country, boom, they stamp you for 45 days. Now, so I got 45 days on arrival. The next thing I did is once that 45 days was starting to near its end, I would go to the immigration office and do an extension for 30 more days. That fee to do that was, I think, I think it's 1900 baht. If you're confused on how to do that, I literally have a video. I'll put it like right here or right here, wherever on the screen, show you how to get an extension. It's pretty simple. Just need a few documents. Um, you can do it in a couple of hours. Then boom, you're stamped for another 30 days. So without a visa at all, I was able to stay essentially 75 days per round. Now you're probably like, okay, what about once the 30 days runs out? Well, when that had when that did happen you have to do a visa run or border run now your options with that is you can do a land border which they offer two per calendar year and then you just you literally can cross cambodia or laos stamp stamp out stamp back in boom you're reset now both times i did i actually did two of those during my time in thailand uh, so i did two land borders one was actually this year, one was last year. Um, the fee for that was probably about $100 if you pay an agency or what was that 3,000 baht, I think. Once again, they just, they just pick you up, you go do the land border, they take care of everything for you, all the paperwork. So it's a very simple process. Now you're reset. So I reset, boom, another 45 days. Well, actually, technically another 75 days I have because I got 45 days on, on entry, 30 day extension, right? Now, so the extra 15 days I was able to get allowed me to stay basically that eight months. But at a certain point last year, or maybe it was this year, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was this year, Thailand went back to the 30 day entry. So then Thailand stopped doing the 45 days. So now it's back to the normal 30 days. From there, basically I had 60 days. Now, so during my time period of eight months, I did two land borders. Once again, one was in 2022 and one was this year. The other um, visa run I did, so I did a total of three visa runs. The other one, I decided to go to Vietnam. So I went to Vietnam for like, I think I was there for like four days, um, then flew right back. So essentially, for you guys who are confused, I didn't stay eight consecutive months in Thailand like without doing anything, right? I didn't just stay there and just you know break the rules. No, I did a land border run well i did three of them total so i can um basically fall under you know fall or do things within the rules so now you're probably wondering okay you can do two land borders per year but like how many by air now this is pretty much up in the air and depending on who you talk to you'll get a different answer right when it comes to flight entries into the country it can really go either way there's no set number that i'm aware of of how many air entries you can do per year with that being said, I have heard from people who've done the whole visa runs a lot over a long period of time that they used to in the past kind of let it slide, but now they're cracking a little more down on it. So with that knowledge that I was informed with, once my eight, eighth month approached in Thailand, which is why I'm now in Bali. So right, instead of doing, I, I told myself, instead of doing a, another regular 
uh, entry where I just go for a couple of days and come right back or do, I could have done a, a, another land board if I wanted to, but I, I wanted to see Bali. It's not an expensive flight to get here. Um, so yeah, I figured why not just come to Bali? But I also told myself that I didn't even want to go through the possibility of getting denied entry on this next return. So I decided to stay in Bali for at least a month. That way it doesn't look like I'm just hopping back and forth. With that being said, I've ended up liking Bali, so I've extended for a second month. After this month, I will then return to Thailand where it should be no problem for me getting in because I was literally away from the country for 60 days. So there's no reason to really even question me coming back into the country if I left for a whole two months. It's like, okay, I'm on vacation again. So I don't see a reason to get denied entry. Now, mind you, I've never been denied entry. It's just all theory. I could have maybe done another air uh, border run where I literally just flew somewhere close and flew back in a day or two. And there's no telling whether or whether or not I would have gotten denied. I will never know. I just didn't want to risk it, which is why I am here now. So I know that might not answer your question, but basically with the air entries, it's like if you do them frequently and if you don't stay away for like, if you do like the same day, you know, fly in, fly out, fly back in, you know, and they might look at it and have some questions, right? They might, they might raise some red flags and it's all dependent on the immigration officer you're talking to or dealing with. So if you're doing that, you know, you might want to try to use your best intuition and get in a line where someone does, where someone doesn't look like they're taking the job super, super seriously. I know that's kind of like, how do you tell? You can't really is what I'm saying. Um, so just be mindful of that. Now, the other question I get is that people from places that are not America ask me that question. I'm an American passport holder. So the unfair advantage that I have is that our passports aren't probably looked at the same as someone from like certain countries in Africa. And I don't mean that to knock, but it's just like, you know, our passports, we don't really get questioned. We're like, oh, like they're American. They're probably not trying to live here, whatever, versus coming from other places. So if you're not an American passport holder or like a European passport holder or like Australian, I don't really know what to tell you. Because like I said, certain countries, if you're from a certain country, they're going to maybe question you or give you harder of a time. But like I said, being an American passport holder, I don't really get questioned anywhere I go. I get into places pretty easy, right? It's just, it's easy for me to move around with that passport. So there you guys have it. That's how I managed to stay eight months in Thailand. With that being said, do I advise to do what I did? I, I won't say yes or no. Here's the thing. If you're coming to Thailand and you know for sure you want to stay for a long time, and I want to mention that too. When I came to Thailand, I did buy a one-way ticket, but with that being said, I was on pretty much a 90-day run or trial of Thailand to, to see whether I liked it or not. When I bought my one-way ticket, guys, I didn't know really anything about Thailand. I'm a spontaneous person, so I just told myself I'll buy a one-way ticket and I'll figure it out when I get there, and I, I'm cool with operating that way. I realize that everyone is wired the way I am. So with that being said, you might want to have to do some more planning. So maybe at minimum, you go ahead and apply for a tourist visa, which would then be able to give you 90 days. Because I think tourist visa gives you two months, 60 days, and then you can do an extension that gives you a total of 90 days without having to leave the country. So that is option number one that's better than coming visa list if you know you want to stay for at least a certain amount of time. Now, for you guys who want to stay at least a year, your next option is going to be to look at doing a education visa where you know maybe you just take Thai online like Thai uh, language classes online a couple hours a week um, all the full details on that you're gonna need to do your own uh, research like go to the uh, like NBC website and whatnot and um, see what you can find also I do know if you guys don't really care about paying a little fee then you can deal with an agency the thing about Thailand money talks in Thailand um, so the same way that like, you know, getting pulled over in Thailand, I've never, never been pulled over, but it's pretty much a money grab. Like you can pay your way out of a ticket, right? Uh, same way when it comes to like getting a bank account or, or visa situations, there's people who know people, the agencies that work together. Thailand is really about money. So if you got the money you can pay, there's, there's options. Obviously for the people who know they're moving to Thailand, want to be there for a long time. You got like the elite visa and all those different options that allow you to stay like, you know, 15, 20 years or whatever for a, a, a lump sum fee. 
But for the people who don't know they want to make Thailand their home or you're just going there for a temporary time, then the options I'm telling you right now is going to be your best option. So we said three, do what I did, right? Just come without a visa and you can 60 days per run, do a border run, come back another 60 days. If, but like, if you don't want to move around a lot, then and you just want to be at peace of mind, then don't do that. I embrace that option because I shoot content. So doing the border runs gave me an excuse to create more videos and see somewhere else. I look at being in Asia as a hub for everywhere else. So when I say like, oh, I live in Thailand, it's like, I'm basically saying like, I'm just, I'm located in Southeast Asia, right? That's why like I'm embracing, okay, being in Thailand, being in Bali. I'll also visit the Philippines. I, you know, I've been to Vietnam. So if you're young like me, I would say, you know, it's going to be harder to just stay in somewhere like Thailand permanently because there's not really any good options for that. So I would say if you want to relocate like I've done, you have to embrace the willingness to be able to move around. Now, with that being said, somewhere close by that you can stay for 90 days without a visa at all is Malaysia. Malaysia gives you 90 days upon entry with no visa at all. So that give, that's a place you could go and be right by Thailand, right? And, and have for 90 days. So you might have to embrace a life to where, okay, I spend, you take a year time frame. If you're, if you're not getting a visa, right? Then you might spend three months out of the year in Thailand. You might spend two months in Bali. You might spend three months in Malaysia. You might spend one month in Vietnam. You might spend a two months in, in the Philippines. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. You know, I'm just saying just be willing to move around. But for your most sturdy option, like I said, get an education visa and you know actually take some classes or whatnot. Or there are even other agencies, there's other people I could probably connect you with that can that's got some other options for you. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that. I got some just got some other options. And you can talk to them directly. If you want the information, um, comment or email me and I'll send it to you directly. It's nothing to do with me. I'm not even an affiliate, I'm not getting paid for referring you to them. But matter of fact, I kinda should. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, if you guys have any other questions, I think I pretty much answered it in this video about like, you know, how I did my whole eight months. The other question I'll just throw in real quick that people have asked me is like, oh, is that the money thing? Did I save? Like how much did I save? Listen, I'm going to just say this, which I've told other people. Staying somewhere for months of time or doing what I'm doing is not about savings. I, I would be kind of stressed if it was about how much money I have saved. What I mean by that is savings without cash flow is very limiting because no matter what you know what i'm saying like if you're if you're on savings you have to really really be on a budget now, i recommend being on a budget regardless but if you're on savings there's like there's literally a depletion rate rate that you know at this point i'm gonna have to return home what i do there is no time limit because i'm not attached to money i focus on cash flow so every month and multiple times a month i'm going to get paid so just to throw some things out there, I get paid from multiple YouTube channels. I get paid from digital products. I get paid from um, doing uh, remote marketing work for businesses. I run their Facebook ads and help them with marketing, which is actually a great model for those of you who are young and don't mind learning a new skill set, the agency model, which I'm looking to take actually more seriously uh, because it's just like, it's something you can do from anywhere and so many businesses need help. But this not, video is not about that. Um, but. On that note, guys, that is just my two cents to throw in there is, yeah, is don't focus on savings, focus on having some cash flow or way to make money away from home remotely. You do not want to be out here living on savings. Um, and yeah, and so the beginning is obviously those are the options for staying a longer period of time in Thailand. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any comments, leave them below. Peace.